Good morning, guys. Welcome to my Monday morning rants for Monday, the 16th of August, 2021. Um, it was a pretty productive week as far as lockdown productive weeks go. Um, I was invited onto the All Talk Car podcast. Talk is in not talking, but talk is in T O R Q U E. Um, I really like that name. Uh, and had an awesome time uh, chatting to uh, an old mate of mine, Ross, from the VW Golf community, and a couple of his mates who are uh, like 100 and, 130 episodes in, I think. Um, those three uh, obviously really gel, and uh, I think I really gelled with them. Um, the couple of glasses of wine that I had before the podcast really helped. It was a late night, nine o'clock podcast. And um, I haven't listened back to it. Um, I tried to uh, the other day and I sort of skipped around the video. And every time I did skip around the video, it was just me saying the F, F word, like F bombs everywhere. And uh, I think I get like that when I'm drunk and I've got a bit of a potty mouth. And uh, yeah, I, I haven't listened back to it yet, but the guys really really enjoyed it and they said it was a really good podcast and um and uh yeah i do remember that i did have a really good time on it so um i will leave a link to that in the description below and i uh, hope you guys uh check it out i i will i will uh, re-listen to it at some point this week too and um hopefully i can get over my potty mouth um but yeah it's just uh you know, as much as I'm not crazy about cars right now, it's just always awesome talking about uh, stuff that people are into in general. Like, oh my God, Mia's going nuts back there. Um, but yeah, just uh, just just hanging out with really passionate people and uh, talking about stuff uh, openly and freely. And uh, we talked about um, my background, uh, uh, GTR talk as well. Um, and as well as talking about like the new generation of kids and, uh, what they're, what they're into and, uh, electric cars as well. And, um, yeah, uh, have a listen to it if you can. Um, bit of bad news. I lost my fish tank last week. Uh, I had a tank crash. Um, I've had that tank set up since 2015 and... Um, I've kept an aquarium pretty much, uh, my whole life, right? Like I grew up with an aquarium in the house all the time cause dad was super into aquariums. His, um, his first business was an aquarium shop in Bondi beach. So it was called beach aquariums. Uh, and he was one of the first people to ever start selling saltwater fish, marine fish. And, um, for my whole life, I've always thought marine fish would have been the hardest fish to keep and I avoided it for so many years and I've had like planted tanks my whole life but then uh as an homage to him in some ways when I when I moved into this house uh you know 15 years ago whatever I I set up a, a marine aquarium and I got really good at it and um this tank that I've had it's a it's a nano tank it's a small tank so running a small tank uh contrary to what a lot of people might think that it might be easier it's actually harder because if something goes wrong shit really hits the fan and uh it's very hard to have a tank crash in a big tank because there's just so much water in it it's stable you know and um yeah i've never had a tank crash before in this tank and it's just uh i i, I believe that i know a thing or two about keeping aquariums and um it's been going strong for all these years um you know, if anything, it's gone bonkers. Like the the corals are grown onto the front of the glass. It's like shit was shit was growing really well. And um, I did a water change on the tank last week, and everything just died. Like within two days, everything was dead. Uh, the corals died first, and when corals die, it just fouls the water so bad. And um, these zoas that I had were growing onto the glass, and it was it would have been really hard for me to try to figure out how to take them out because they're, they're growing all over the surfaces you know all over the rocks and stuff and it, it, it just was I was unable to 
to to lift them out of the water. So it just fouled the water so bad that um everything just started dying. You know, the one coral that I pulled out um that I could pull out, man, the stench of it was just so foul. It was just one of those smells that uh, you smell it once and then like for the next couple of days, it, it, it just comes back into your memory and you can just smell it. Um, oh, uh, yeah. And, and like the, the fish are the worst, like losing the fish are the worst. Like um, the two clownfish that I had, like especially one of them, which was um, a designer clownfish, a Picasso clown, a man-made clownfish that um, came in from the US. So um yeah it just it, it was just horrible like it just got me thinking all sorts of stuff like one you know i had a i had a little message uh i sent a little message to my dad and it's like you know he my dad passed away when i was 18 so um like i said like having a fish tank around has always been a bit of a um an homage to him and like um it's it's something that i know he'd be happy with that i keep a fish tank but um i had to I had to let him know that the tank, um, the tank is 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 gone, and that um, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry for not keeping a fish tank anymore. I tore it all down, um, you know, uh, end of an era. Like I just, I, I don't think I can keep a fish tank anymore. And um, you know, all that time that I was keeping fish tanks, like in, in the beginning, I did use corals and fish that were taken out of the ocean, and I didn't think too much of it at the time because I was growing them, everything was doing well. But, you know, if any aquarist is honest with themselves, they'll know that they've lost more than they've grown. And uh, to lose something that's been taken out of the ocean is, it's it feels extra bad. Like, it feels really, really fucking bad. And, and like, I, I've never really been in denial about it. Like, with the, the, the tank that I just tore down, um, most of the um corals and 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 the fish uh were man-made so i felt better about it in terms of sustainability and stuff i felt better about it but you know when when everything just started dying it it doesn't matter whether it was man-made or not it's just it just doesn't feel good and uh it's no one's fault but my own you know like uh when i did the water change i, I don't know what happened like i i started to get paranoid about it we've viv and i've been cleaning up the house so much that i thought maybe she might have used the bucket with some cleaning products or something because that would have just fucking done it but she swears she didn't touch that bucket so uh, it's not it wasn't her um the only thing i think of maybe is the water in uh the water that i replaced it with was off somehow and, and it was um, I have these two huge tanks in my laundry full of salt water and uh, it was they're running out so I was using the water that was um, at the very bottom of the barrel and who knows maybe uh, the chemistry of that water um, or the temperature because um, I don't I don't have a heater in anymore because there was hardly any water in it so I took the heater out so it could have been a temperature change could have been a chemi chemical change chemistry change um, I really don't know exactly what happened, which is uh, even more frustrating. Um, but yeah, end of an era. Uh, the tank is gone. Um, I'm not pointing a finger at anyone who chooses to keep fish tanks. I think they all know that, um, uh, yeah, you lose more than you grow. Like, like uh, I don't I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it now. Um, but that is how I feel about it. I feel about it now. It's like I don't think I could. I, I don't. I don't think I could set another tank up again. It's just. Um, it's not that it's quite cruelty to animals, but it's like, man, I, uh, I, I just don't want it on my hands, you know. Um, so yeah. Uh, what else? Um, it's been awesome to have Viv um, living with me during this lockdown for the last week. Uh, um we have uh gone bonkers with just like cleaning up the place and um and it, and it feels really good and um she's not a great cook i'm really shocking and so we've decided to cook each other a meal once a week and uh i'm looking forward to that actually i've already kicked it off i kicked her i kicked off a, with a pasta dish the other night um I call it like bachelor survival style cooking because I just use whatever I've got in the fridge and whatever I can salvage. Um, 
And so it's her turn next. And um, and we're also going to have movie night once a week. So I kind of am really looking forward to that because I'm introducing her to to stuff that she's never heard of before. Like um, even with when we sit down in front of the couch and we're watching YouTube videos, I'm showing her um, footage from... Uh, the past with um, Led Zeppelin and introducing her to Jim Morrison and the Doors and stuff and like just trying to compare that stuff to modern day Triple J Top 100 crap um, and um, pop hits and, and all that kind of shit and fucking idols and crap. Um, so yeah, that, that's that been that's been great. Just like I don't feel like I'm um, educating so much as just like I'm enjoying watching and listening to this stuff right now and it's uh it's good that she's willing to explore it as well so i can't wait to show her some films that she's never even heard of before um and it'd be great to dig up some shit you know like um i've already got a few on my list like memento i really want to watch that again um natural born killers and fuck i just want to dig up some even all the tarantino films like, uh, I really, I really need her to watch all of that shit. And I, you know what? I just hope that all those films are good too, because sometimes what happens is you remember something for being fucking amazing and whether it is or not today, um, you don't know until you give it a go. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, the sun is coming up. Um, as you can see in the background, there's like a rug that we're going to clean. And then there's like, clothes drying i mean man i've uh, uh viv refuses to use the dryer which is great uh i'm down for that um i hope everyone is sitting tight this lockdown's probably going to go on for uh ever at this stage uh it looks like the stats are bad um you know it's been awesome catching up with my mum for dinner like she's nominated me as the one person that can visit her during this lockdown so i've caught up with her twice already for dinner and um she's my informant in regards to covid like i try not to watch the news ever it's just one of my things i've i've not watched the news since i was a kid um it's one of those things where as a as a family um you know mum dad used to sit my sister and I down uh, every night in front of the TV to watch the news. And it was always fucking negative. It's always fucking horrible. Um, and so ever since high school, I've just never watched the news. But um, yeah, it's hard to not hear about things through the grapevine. And that is that is how I find my news. And uh, mum's keeping me up to date. And apparently there's like hundreds of new cases every day in Sydney. And it looks like lockdown's going to be extended past the end of this month. Um, but like I said, uh, just having Viv around has sort of saved me really. Um, I really miss shooting though. Like it's just my, 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 um, just the, my levels of motivation are just lower than ever and just not shooting with, I'm, I had so many girls lined up to shoot before lockdown that I'd never met before. And they're sort of the most inspirational shoots for me because, um, you don't know who you're going to meet. And, uh, it forces me to get out of my comfort zone and work extra hard to make sure I do well, especially during a first shoot and leave a good impression. And, uh, that's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of work, the blood, sweat and tears you put in that, that gives you that inspiration back and keeps you bouncing, you know? So I'm, I'm well and truly not fucking bouncing right now. Um, still playing a shit ton of computer games, playing them every day, um, and uh yeah that's kind of my routine and like even with the patreon stuff that i'm shooting with viv the good thing about it is i'm no longer and i've been doing this for a little while but i'm no longer editing the entire set in one sitting i am literally editing a handful of photos a day and uploading them direct to patreon so it really is as live as it gets uh and it as well it just makes sure that it gives me something to do every single day um, that little, uh, that little bit of work a day is, um, help helping, you know, it, it's helping, but, um, but yeah, I really miss shooting in general. Uh, so yeah, um, sit tight guys. Um, I'm hoping to, uh, do another podcast with a guy, uh, Lockie that I did a podcast with 
with Lockie uh, with the Geeked Out show, but I really want to get him on just uh, him and I and just uh, talk about life and stuff. He's got kids and he's crazy about cars and stuff. So, um, yeah, he sent me some feedback yesterday about the podcast that I did with the uh, All Talk Car Podcast guys and he enjoyed it. And uh, I, I really enjoyed the podcast that um, Hawk and I did with Lockie as well and Geeked Out. So, uh, it would be awesome to to tee up a time with him to do a podcast this week if possible um so yeah guys take it easy um uh i hope everyone has as good as a week as they can and um i shall catch you guys in the next one see you